My name is Allie Wilbur and I'm a visual artist working in the Fox Cities. I'm an artist in residence at The Refuge Nonprofit for the Arts, um, The Refuge Foundation for the Arts, which is a nonprofit located in Appleton, Wisconsin. Actually, right now I live in a monastery building. We are currently in my studio in the very deepest, darkest corner of that monastery building. Um, I recently, well, about two years ago, I graduated with my degree in studio art and English from Ripon College. And then I kind of found myself living in Appleton. Uh, didn't really plan to, it just kind of happened that way. I've been playing with a lot of mediums, um, fire painting, gunpowder, fireworks, smoke, uh, resin, oil paint, charcoal, anything like that. I got my hands on a lot of different pots right now. I'm starting a company. I just started working at the Museum of Wisconsin Art. Um, I'm always doing design projects and commission pieces and shows and I've been teaching classes and figure drawing classes and art tutoring and I've kind of uh, left no time for myself beyond all of that, but I'm happy with that. So here I am. I live in a little monk room and I have a studio here and I don't pay rent, which is probably the most ideal situation I could have ever asked for coming out of college, to live in a place surrounded by musicians and artists and creatives having a space to work and kind of um, realize the need to be in the studio and to, to make work and to keep busy without getting distracted by other things in life. I mean, of course, I've had a few other part-time jobs, quite a few of them actually, um, to fund my making art, but that's been my primary focus for the last two years is just making money to spend it on art supplies, basically, um, so that I can try to sell things and try to put myself out there and be involved. And I've I did not think I was going to stay in Appleton, um, but I've kind of grown to love it and I've grown to love the people and the support system here. The art community is very supportive of, of each other and interested in helping people get opportunities and even just the state of Wisconsin, I think, is, is doing a great job with that right now. For instance, I just got the job at the museum, which is a curatorial program assistant and, I mean, to be involved with anything, curating it without a master's degree is pretty important. I mean, for me, it's important. That's the world I want to be in, and it's not an easy field to jump into. Um, if it's just kind of been a lot of meeting people and networking and making friends and proving to them that I'm passionate about what I'm doing, I think, and that I'm driven and that I want to keep moving forward with it. Um, which has also, you know, funny enough, a couple of months ago I said, Allie, you just need to, like, hunker down and stop applying to everything, stop trying to be in every show and take every opportunity that comes your way. You just need to make money and focus on your own work for a while. And then about a week later, I decided to start a company. <laughs> so uh, me and two other women are starting a company called The Guild, which is going to be a two-sided platform for public artists and people trying to facilitate public artwork. So it's going to be an online marketplace where an artist can upload a design or an idea of a mural that they would love to install along with a price point and um, any other materials or costs associated with it so that someone going to facilitate a mural somewhere, a company, municipality, anyone, can go in and find the exact design in their price range in the right location and all of the requirements that they need and then help that mural go forward. So it's helping artists get more work, it's helping communities have better public artwork, more public artwork, it's making the whole process transparent for everyone something that I've learned in the last year. I just started doing murals myself. A year ago I did my first mural and I didn't think I would like to do that either. That's not something that I was ever planning to get into, but um, it's a big canvas for sharing ideas and a lot of people see it and I think that's really important. And I would love for artists to have the opportunity to share their opinions and ideas and theories about the world on such a large scale that anyone walking by interacts with it without meaning to interact with it. They're not going to a gallery, they're not seeking it out. They're just walking down the street and then they see a piece of artwork and you know maybe it's a little strange, maybe there's something about it that isn't what they would normally encounter and it makes them think about it and wonder what the artist is trying to say. And I want there to be more of that. Mm -hmm. You know, alternatively, as a visual artist looking for mural work, I might have to submit like 10 different designs to 10 different calls for art and I might not get any work out of it. So there's so much time spent making these designs and then you might not get any money or work out of it. On the other end of it, someone facilitating a mural might have a donor, donor giving like $5,000, let's say, to put up a public artwork piece. They put out a call for art, they spend all this time figuring out what they want to have and where, 
and there's no guarantee that anything they get is going to be what they're looking for. So I'm particularly excited about this idea because it will help artists put out designs that they really want to do with how exactly how much money they think is fair to be paid for it. And then people looking for murals can just find something that they're, they, they fall in love with that's a perfect fit for them. So I'm excited to see this company grow. It's in its really early stages right now. Um, and I'm spending a lot of time <laughs> putting it together outside of you know all the other projects that I'm working on. But I think, like I said earlier, I wouldn't have it any other way, just keeping really busy with all these things. It's exciting to watch them grow and to know that I'm part of making them grow and making them move forward. One of the hardest things is staying focused on what I want to do and what I care about and not succumbing to that fear of I need to get a Monday through Friday 9 to 5 job to pay everything off. Like honestly, I've kind of played with it a little bit with some of the jobs that I've had and I always not only feel bad in those situations, just like my soul is <laughs> sucked out, but I don't have time to work on the things that I want to be working on and I know that I'm not making forward motion toward the career and the life that I want to have. And I think that's part of what makes me always leave those jobs. When it comes down to it, I take a lot of risks with me, you know, for instance, spending all my money having prints made or framing because I'm hoping or assuming that I'm going to sell a few of them and make that back. Uh, and I've gotten down my last penny a couple of times, but I think the risks have all been worth it because I've met a lot of people and I've done a lot of things and events and and I am moving forward. It's a crawl, and eventually I hope I can pay off my debt. Um, when it comes to artists, younger artists in Wisconsin, I would tell them to apply to everything. Apply to every job. You're going to be rejected 500 times, but maybe once, like me a week ago, you might get an email that's like, we're delighted to bring you on board. And like, I couldn't believe it when I read that because I'm so used to getting rejection emails. But it's a really good thing to kind of build up your immunity to the rejection because it's going to happen. It's going to happen a lot. Apply to every show, apply to every residency, apply to every job, meet people. Networking is like the biggest thing, I feel like, in, in the art community. Is The more people you meet, they're going to talk about you to other people, or they're, they're going to remember your name. We all kind of support each other, at least around here, and I feel like that's very important. I mean, I'm the first one also to list off 20 people that I think you should be talking to, clearly. Um, you're not going to have money, but I guess that's the trade-off of what kind of a life do you want to live? Do you want to live a life doing something that you love and maybe you're not going to be sitting on piles of cash or like a dollar or two? But I would rather do something that I love and I'm excited about and then I don't feel like I need to spend all my money on things to make me happy at the end of the day. I think one of the hardest things about being an artist or a creative in general is everyone's going to tell you you can't do it. Everyone's going to tell you like... You know, when are you going to get a real job or like they're not going to have faith that you can make money doing it or like there's a starving artist trope, which I mean, I mean, I'll joke about it occasionally, but honestly, I spend most of my money on art supplies and good food, so I'm not starving, you know, <laughs> I'm just, you know, in debt. Living kind of on the edge of things and not having a, a stable ground. I was actually just talking to a friend of mine the other day about, you know, um, she's a musician, a musician and artist I was talking to the other day about this kind of we want something stable, but we also want to keep growing. So we, it's like hills and valleys. You know, every time we think we want to be comfortable and we want to stay where we are, then we're like, oh, but what if we do this thing? What if I start a company? You know, what if I do something like this? And we kind of need to follow, you know, those desires as creatives, but it's going to be up and down. And it's going to be really up and it's going to be really down. And you just kind of have to live that life because I'm never going to live a comfortable, stable life. I know that as much as I might want it sometimes. I'm always going to want something more too. I'm going to want to do a new project. I'm going to want to, you know, push myself further. And that's good. It's just not going to feel good when I'm in the low points. <laughs> but don't give up on it if it's what you love doing, which I think most of us know that we just need it, like physically need to be making our work and need to be doing things and creating. And I think that's a really exciting thing to feel, that sense of purpose. I'm happy that I have it, even if it means that I don't have a lot of money. I'm happy to have a sense of purpose and knowing what I want to do in the world in one way or another. Um, yeah. So follow the Guild, <laughs> the Guild Arts on Instagram. 
uh, www.theguildarts.com. It's kind of our skeleton website right now, but you can kind of get an idea of what we're doing and email us if you are an artist or if you're someone looking for public artwork. I would love to hear from you. Also, my Instagram is Smoke Nouveau, and you can see me playing with fire and butterflies and shiny gold things. That's great. Thank you. <laughs> That's awesome because the next question is always like, oh, so where can people find more? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, I know where they can find Oh, yeah, right there. You got I'm going to tell them all about it. 